All right, we're on the air right now. Let's see. Welcome back. It's been a couple of weeks uh, break. Today we're going to be talking about, uh, let's see, we're reviewing the Avengers yes. movie yep. that just came out on uh, Blu-ray. We saw it in theaters, everybody. Of course, the day it came out, everybody knows that. Like, I'm going to be late right. behind on that. And, uh, no, we're gonna, but we also, I just picked up the Blu-ray yesterday, so we're going to be reviewing that. We're going to be talking about the Vinyl Arts Thought Show that we broadcast <sighs> live from. That's great. And uh, we're going to be talking to Taffeta Darling. She's got some stuff coming up. Um, some special stuff on her own, so we're gonna let her plug a little bit of stuff in exchange for some money. So it's gonna be a fun show tonight, but uh, or today, this today, afternoon. It's just right it's so rainy that like it's, <laughs> it anymore. feels yeah. And we're gonna I talk. I'm gonna see how long you can. Ha- and we're gonna talk a little about the weather, so it's gonna be it's gonna be nice. But yes. uh, we're gonna run our intro real fast, and when we come back from the intro, we'll. well it's uh, gonna be run at the same speed as always. Oh, that's true. Yeah, let's just run the intro. Jedi, can we run the intro at regular speed? I think Jenna's just grimaced. (laughs) (laughs) That's never a good sign when your producer grimaces at you. So everybody, I mean, we've all seen the Avengers. Uh, Jay and I sat down last night and watched the commentary along with it as well. I'm a little butt hurt. I wasn't invited because I know nothing of the. You're a little butt hurt. (laughs) A little commentary. I thought you said you invited her. I did invite her. He did not. Yes, I did. Wait, or did I dream that I invited you? I got no invite. In your dreams, I invited you to my house to hang out. Stop jumping in my dreams, dude. No, there's nothing I can do about that. How are we doing? Did we lose something? Something go by the wayside? Man, we got a new computer, so <laughs> I'm trying to figure out where It's a little Brits. Asian boy. Like It's a literally a little kid on a computer. <laughs> abacus yeah. trying to move really fast. Getting okay. all the zeros in Oh, one. one, zero, one, one, zero. <laughs> <laughs> totally not racist. Well, I'll tell you what. How about we just do the intro, and then when we get around to finding the actual, the actual running bit, there, we'll just we'll run it there. So, okay. what's been going on these last couple of weeks, everybody? Let's talk about that. Um, oh, uh, never mind. Okay, uh, we got it. <laughs> Sorry, people at home. That was a, that was a tease and a drop. No, okay. Well, let's go ahead and roll with it. Jay, what have you been doing? Your car, Jay's car has been my up my car is flooded. Um, not like the engine, like the inside of it. There's some sort of missing seal. So there's a puddle <laughs> in the passenger side floor area. Oh, from all the rain. Yeah. So, I mean, oh. good one. She forgets she should be a mechanic. Rain. Oh, it's from the it's rain. It's the rain. I thought it was oh. from all the dry air. Well, I didn't know if maybe it was from the earthquake. Apparently, you guys had an earthquake. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, I guess, yeah. what about that? It felt in Irving. Did you hear about that, Jedi? What? Yeah, but what does she mean, you guys? Like, she's not a part of the uh, <laughs> DSW area. <laughs> no, well, it, I didn't feel she it in Arlington in or Pantigo. You know, I'm about 40 minutes away. I didn't feel it. I didn't I feel didn't, anything didn't, either. Didn't feel no. There was a chance I was masturbating and rocking my own world so hard. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. I could have just thought I was having a really good time with myself. The earth moved for myself. <laughs> and, uh, I thought that's what it was. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, but, but it was in Irving. And it was like a 3.4. What? Pretty decent size. And it was yeah. like, you know, felt uh, as far as like, you know, McKinney people were feeling it. And some people in Dallas were saying they felt it. Like people in Deep Elmery. And I was like, what? Some people were like, spit fell off my walls. So... Wow, and a three was not that powerful. I thought that was feelable, but yeah, no, nothing like got torn down or, or fell down, no buildings, it's something nice. like that. Yeah, so that's interesting. Creepy. I had not heard about that. Jay, yeah, maybe, maybe it was the earthquake. It shook earthquake. your car. That's what I thought. Loose. What's that? I thought maybe your car was messed up from the earthquake. Maybe. Yep. Yeah, it may be. Maybe it shook something loose, and I just didn't know. Hmm. It's boring, but possible. <laughs> Let's see, Taffo. What do you tweet now? Go ahead and tease it out, because we're gonna talk about it a little bit later. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> Jedi's, <laughs> now that he found it, he's so eager to play it. Why don't you tease up for the audience, though? You're going to be talking about a little bit about Dr. Sketchies. Yeah, I'm headed to Austin again at the end of this week. So uh, actually in a week, in the new week of next week. <laughs> <laughs> Seven days from today, I'll be in Austin. All right. And then, uh, <laughs> then we're going to also, like I said, we said, review the Avengers and some of the special features on there today. But uh, let's go ahead and take a quick uh, break for our intro. You're Yay. welcome. <laughs>
the air. We gotta get that ready so that the vote. Is that showing up, you guys? No. I'll, I'll mess with it. Don't worry about it. I'm just gonna look up a bunch of porn the whole time. There's nothing wrong with that. So. Any preferences? Uh. Costumed. Yeah. All right. Tim. <laughs> so. Uh, well, it's all right. Let's so let's start talking about the Avengers, directed by Joss Whedon of, uh, and he helped write it. That's right, uh, one of the co-writers, and uh, of of course Firefly fame, mm-hmm. Buffy. Uh, what was the other uh, Dollhouse? Angel. Dollhouse. Angel Dollhouse. Um, Doctor Horrible Sing Along. That's of course one of the greatest things one. ever. Mm-hmm. Now I. I I had completely for. I guess I never really thought about it, but we were listening to the commentary last night, and he pointed out that this is only the second film he's directed, with yeah. Serenity being the first. And for a sophomore effort, That's, man, what, what for a, a sophomore great film. effort that absolutely like crushed all other. Yeah, they um, killed at the ever. box office, you know. So for the people that don't know, who would like to? Who knows more about the Avengers? Probably Taff. I don't know about that. You don't do you know even, about that. Do you even see the shirt I'm wearing. I mean, I really? mean, he did go Marvel today. I think oh, I'm more schooled I thought than, that like, was Maeve Rell, like, <laughs> like a <laughs> the, the knockoff company. version. Well, Jedi, catch everybody. What is what is the I'm Avengers Jay, from the Jedi. Jedi? Good lord, you're That's Jedi. 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 Oh, okay, that works. Jedi. Yeah. Good, good save. Good save. <laughs> Master J, okay. uh, would you care to give the people at home a little bit of a, a, a quick catch up on what the Avengers is for Marvel? Okay, the Avengers is uh, the Avengers, Earth's Mightiest Heroes. It's the full name of it uh but what it is is it's a collection of some of the yeah (laughs) pretentious like nerdgasm on it but um anyways it's a collection of some of the most iconic and powerful superheroes in the marvel universe and the way it originally started was just um the original comic it was just kind of an odd confluence of events where all these superheroes got dragged together they never really interacted before but there's one huge you know global scale threat coming and they all were kind of tackling it on their own and they wound up in the same place and everything came together very nicely in a series of horrible accidents and then you would almost think they'd been written that way i know just happened (laughs) to come together but it just like happened so it's crazy but um anyways so then they were like hey this shit actually works when we all you know work together we can totally crush basically anything that tries to destroy the world which happens with frightening regularity yeah. in the Marvel Universe. Like, it'd be great when people talk about, man, I sure would love to live in a comic book world. Yeah, if you were a comic book hero. <laughs> yeah. If you're one of the any other, like, billions of peons stuck on that planet, every week New York gets destroyed. Oh, never mind. See, I'm convinced that the New York of the Marvel Universe has extremely, extremely cheap property values, <laughs> but incredibly expensive insurance rates. It's That's... like, oh, you can buy this building. Yeah, yeah, it's like 10 bucks for the entire skyscraper. But the insurance is going to be like a billion dollars. Yeah. Sometimes just, the Hulk breaks out. That's what I was yeah. going to say. Do you do you want to get Acts of God slash Hulk insurance? But maybe there's like a map that shows you are in this radius of the Hulk. You are in the danger zone corridor. Oh, you want to live coded. You want to live on the island of Manhattan? Ah, that's just no. Because uh, seriously, the collateral damage has it's just insane. I it's mean, more than that movie Collateral Damage with Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's true. I didn't see that. No one did. <laughs> I but I worked at Blockbuster and I used to walk past that cover and I always went, there's a movie called Collateral Damage with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I know so many. It's, it's I've weird. Seen I like can actually name. Of it. It's oh, really? really bad. I can actually, from working at Blockbuster, I can name movies based on if somebody. There's a lot of movies that somebody names like who's in it and what it kind of looks like. I can like thumb through the covers and go, ah, glitter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's the movie. Crossroads with Britney Spears. That's the movie you're thinking he of. He watches those every week. Oh, well, that. Those are good. Those are the examples of great films. <laughs> those are on the weekly rotation. <laughs> so the uh, Marvel Avengers is, is the, don't get offended if you're a Marvel fan over DC, but the Justice League of the Marvel Universe. Yes, except they came out first and are better. I don't know about better, but we'll go with Really that. in every way. They got Thor on their team. I'm not even going to pretend that that's a better character. But they've also got a Hulk. Yeah. They do have a Hulk, and I give them that. As, <laughs> also, as Downey Jr. points he's out. He's like the most powerful. Hulk I is the strongest one He's like is. the strongest one you really... Barring all the movies that were made, he's still one of my favorite characters from Marvel. Although they did do that uh, DC Marvel crossover event. Oh, God, that was years ago where Hulk actually fought Superman. I didn't see that one. Yeah. Well, yeah, well Superman just cheated. He just like kept flying away and just like laser beams. I'm just gonna keep laser beaming. Cheating you until by you using fall his down. superpowers. Yeah. Well, then the whole cheated by smashing stuff. That's I know, how I like I know. it. But you remember the Marvel D- uh, DC Marvel versus DC crossover? Mm-hmm. I got him at the house. Four oh. issues. It was actually kind of cool. Um, 
The first and fourth issue, DC paid to publish, and the second and third, Marvel paid to publish. And on the covers, whoever paid to publish it got their name first. So it's technically DC versus Marvel, then it's Marvel versus DC, Marvel versus DC, then DC versus Marvel again. And each one got to have their characters more in the forefront for the the ones they produced. And they had some good good pairings of people to fight. It's actually one of my my favorites. Lobo versus Wolverine was good. (laughs) I like that. (laughs) One of the the great things about it is when they they designed it, they... um, you know, obviously it's a collaboration for two companies that really do respect each other, but who have a lot of fans that see them being at odds with each other. Mm-hmm. So it's great because each universe is represented by this giant metallic god. One's red and one's blue. And yeah. They don't say it, but obviously one represents DC and one represents... And these two giants clash by throwing their superheroes at each other. And uh, a little bit of spoiler, go ahead and skip like 30 seconds past this or close <laughs> your ears off. But um, it's great because at the end, they decide that there's enough room for these two gods to coexist. Yeah, they, and they can make more money and more power by existing together, which is basically, you know, <laughs> it, was, it was a nice ribbing of DC to Marvel being like, we totally took all those suckers' money thinking of everybody fight. Yeah, and like, then we just, <laughs> we just bought more of them. Uh, Captain America versus Batman, another great fight. Yeah, that was a really cool it one. Lasted, that fight lasted, like, I think, you know, it starts at the, um, in issue one. And by issue four, they're like, okay, we've been fighting for three <laughs> days now. Yeah, it just keeps going. Fuck. And, like, it starts off at, like, one end of a city, and it ends with them, like, down in the sewers on the other side of the city. Like, they just would not stop fighting constantly. So, Well, now that people at home have got an idea of what the Avengers are, it's the best of Marvel's universe all put together in the movie minus Spider-Man. Yes, so, but they're working uh, on that for Avengers too. That, that's great. They're uh, yeah. because obviously, like we were talking about earlier today, Sony, I believe, owns the rights to the Spider-Man franchise, and so they don't. Marvel can't use no, the they, character. They used to. They did up through this movie. This movie is a Sony production, not a Marvel production. Avengers? No, 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 no. The Spider-Man. last Spider-Man. Spider-Man three or the most recent? The one most recent made? one. Oh, is it? Yeah, I, I thought it was made by. Marvel, Marvel Studios. Studios had a hand in it, but the Sony still owns the licensing rights, mm. which I believe means Marvel can't make a Spider-Man movie without getting Sony's permission. That's why he wasn't in the event. Right, that's why they, mm. could, they didn't feel comfortable including him in. But hopefully they'll get all that sorted out because obviously he needs to be in there. But now that we know what, what the Avengers is, let's talk about the movie. So directed by R- Josh Whedon, and co-written, it starts off with they have the cube, which has been nicely introduced in previous movies from yep. the Marvel Universe. So... Um, which is the movie that introduces the cube? Is that Captain, Captain America? That's Captain America introduced the cube, mm-hmm. and Thor obviously introduces Loki, and they have the battle for it and everything Loki. like that. Yeah, I, I gotta admit, I have a bit of a man crush on that guy too. Tom Hiddleston, good God! <laughs> <laughs> Do we need to give you a minute? You getting some hot flashes? Uh, I'm good. Okay, that's then. pretty good. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll not tell James about that. <laughs> So uh, okay, but obviously Marvel's been building up through these films to to the Avengers film, so yes. that each character's been getting its own. And now, th- of the success of the Avengers, the characters, some of the characters will be getting backstories. Like Hawkeye now will get a backstory movie. Black Widow will get a backstory movie. And Hulk, I, th- I think they're folding those together into one. Yeah, I think yeah, I think they are. And then the Hulk, which has just been raped over and for a big guy, that guy has been bent <laughs> over yeah. and taken it up just, the rear yeah. in every movie I've ever seen yeah. with the word Hulk attached to it, especially that angle. Lee one, which oh was just God. the biggest piece of oh. trash ever. That was. That Let was... us not talk of that one. That <laughs> but apparently the whole painful Hulk did so well with game. fans in this one that they they were they shut down all the Hulk movies. They were just this is not going to happen, and they they've reopened now. It's a two yeah. movie with deal Mark with Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo, I'm just... who was just fantastic in the role. I think he's got six or seven uh, more uh, roles he's supposed to appear in different movies he's supposed to appear in after that. Really? Release. Oh, that's I great. read it. It was like either six or seven deals that he had signed. Uh, yeah, well, Iron we, Man three with like Hulk. He, <laughs> yeah, we were talking about this. I want to see an Iron Hulk movie where Iron Man and, Hulk and Bruce Banner and Tony Stark team up as the scientist guy yeah, as the best so friends. Good. I was really impressed with uh, Mark Ruffalo as the Hulk. Mm-hmm. Um, J- uh, Joss Whedon said that was his number one choice, and when they went for it, he couldn't believe that Marvel said okay to that. Um, now, remind me a little bit to talk about some of the things, that because we watched the commentary and special features last night. We're going to review a little of that as well. But we want, I want to also talk about some of the things that he was able to get through by Marvel, but some of the things that Marvel also requested be in the movie. Not requested, when it was re- insisted. Well, insisted be in the film if they were going to allow Joss Whedon to make it. So the film starts off with the cube being stolen by Loki. Yep. And uh, he takes over and possesses Hawkeye. And, uh, and Fat Face, the professor, Professor Fat Face. <laughs> yes, it was I'm introduced, sure that's in, his name. <laughs> introduced yes. in the Thor movies. Skelgard, isn't that exactly his name? Um, 
Ian Skelgard. No, I mean, good job on looking up at IMDb more than me. <laughs> but <laughs> well, he was in other movies that I've seen. Yeah, before. he's in Anyways. the well, he's in the Thor movie. Yeah. He's, he's the, also this... in Glass House. He was really creepy in Glass House. That was a which terrible Marvel mo- movie. Which Marvel movie was that? Oh my <laughs> God, was that? I got dragged to that movie. People and, that aren't in the movie oh. Glass House shouldn't throw stones at movies named Glass Houses. No, Jane. I will throw stones at this one. This is a terrible movie. It was pretty bad. I watched it on Lifetime Network, and I was like, I've hey, it's never... that guy. I got dragged on, dragged to it by a friend, and basically he wanted to go out with this girl, and she wouldn't go if she couldn't bring her friend, and she wanted a date for her friend, and my buddy Richard's like, come on, you gotta go, come on, I really want to <laughs> go out with You threw yourself girl. on a grenade for that one. No, she was a very cute girl, very nice, it's just I had to sit through the glass house. Well, that's what I meant, not terrible. the girl, the movie. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yes, yeah. so Loki Sorry. steals Sorry. so steals the cube, and basically he's trying to initiate a war. Oh, we should explain that the cube is a, a extraterrestrial power device that can make huge weapons and do right. It's a never-ending power source. Yeah. is basically the way it is. So, so it's like having lots of money, you know, or power, or Romney, or something like that, right? <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> I'm not even a political guy at all. I just took a six. Everybody else is. I'm like, I'm throwing a Romney joke in there. Um, the cube is more likable. <laughs> it's got more personality. Yeah. Like yeah. Obama. <laughs> uh, it's a little more reasonable, too. It's not as fundamentalist. But uh, so it's a never ending power source. Loki steals that he's wanting to basically open up a portal between this uh, interdimensional world between yeah. aliens and Earth and let Earth be taken over to rule it. Okay. Standard plot we've seen a hundred times. Seen it, I mean, since Shakespeare's time, really. So, in this one, though, Fury, who's kind of appeared in each little movie, with the help of Phil, the best character Marvel has ever written in anything. He's so good. Yeah. um, Who's the only character to appear in in every Marvel movie so far that is part of this theatrical franchise together. He's a comic book character. That makes it Right. He was written specifically for the films. It was so great. And we're not going to discuss what happens to him, because that's... Heart wrenching. It's painful. It's um, uplifting. It gives you hope. Does it? <laughs> I yelled at the screen in the theater when that happened. I was like, "What the fuck, Marvel?" Like seriously. It's true. I was sitting next to him. He did not see it coming because <laughs> the first time he saw it was the second time I was seeing it, and uh, he did not take it well. He did no. not take it with plays it's my favorite and character of the whole Marvel series. <laughs> There's a little bit of hope though because you know Fury kind of plays it off. I think you know. Yeah. He yeah. even says you know they just needed to push. So yeah. Right. And that's the thing happen. is I was gonna say in this one, as opposed to the original, they are acting. Actively, Fury is walking around actively trying to put a team together of the world's most powerful superheroes against even his superiors who want nothing right to who do don't it. want it. This is this is a task that Fury is Samuel Jackson is Fury is taking upon himself to push these people together, and uh, he gets them all on a flying battleship, which is pretty cool because that's never been in any of the comics. That was that was written just for the movie too. What? Yeah, that's never that's the helicarrier. The helicarrier. It's been in there since the '60s. They. It has not looked like that. It hasn't flown, according to Josh Whedon in the commentary. No, that was, that you was... you misheard that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Really, you have... misheard that I've, completely. I've... Can we can we Google it? Yeah, we we can. I'm sorry. Maybe maybe I did no, misheard. I thought he. Sure. I thought that they said that that was a new thing no, for the no, film. No, no, the way that they had it flying was a new thing for the film. Because oh, maybe in that's the 60s, what it was. Okay, they just had like propellers on the outside of it, lifting it like helicopter <laughs> yeah, boys. Oh, okay, like, okay. You know, and, like and he was like, yeah. Engines. And then we discovered science, and uh, <laughs> that would not work. You know and what? That is that. You're right. I mean, I mean, misheard that because uh, that does make more sense. Yeah. Please don't just lie to the people. <laughs> hey, I I I misheard it wrong. I'm sorry. So people going home, they got to do their own research too. We can't do all this. Okay, so the, never mark, mind. I mark the on date, it. people. He admitted he was wrong. That also will be edited out in the, in the review that we throw up on YouTube. That'll never be there at all. Love editing, and I love having Final Cut too <laughs> over that. Okay, so but this one, Fury puts them all together, gets them on the helicarrier, gets them up in the air, and of course it turns out it's a trick by Loki to get them all together. Well, no, Loki was playing off of it because he found out they were being put together, so Loki has himself caught. Right, which is one of the deleted that. scenes that explains yeah. that a little better. That I mean, you, you understand the movie, but the idea of, well, why does Loki want to get them all together to destroy them or something like that? And it, it makes more sense in one of the deleted yeah. scenes that he's going, these, he's told by Hawkeye, well, look, he's assembling this team. And so Loki has to find a formidable way to deal with that. Whereas in the theatrical release, it's kind of, well, how did Loki even know these? Know that that was going yeah, like, on, and why would he put that plan yeah. together? Well, I just assumed he was the god of mischief. And he well, that, you, that that's out. the other kind of thing. Is it's, but it, yeah, I mean, you kind of make the assumption. So whereas in the deleted wanted, scenes, they they spell it out a little more so for you, right? I haven't seen the deleted scenes, but yeah, I just assumed that it was because you know he was going to go in there and cause mischief and play him off of each other and yeah. try to unleash the uh, the Hulk, bring some sort of uh, animosity and angriness. I to really the liked in this film how the Hulk was was utilized very 
very small. Like there's only he only hulks out twice, and one time it's unintentional. And then I like that they save the hulking out intentionally, of course, for when they really need is the film. And they didn't kill it with, you know, having him hulk out at every single moment, every little mm-hmm. damn thing over and over again. And Whedon really knows how to have memorable characters that you mm-hmm. can kind of identify with. I mean, he, here he is working with an all-star cast. It's an ensemble cast where every single person obviously has the right to their own movie. And even the people that haven't had their own movies, Jeremy Renner and... and um, Scarlett, Scarlett Johansson. Johansson. So like that obviously are well-known stars. You know, I know Renner's gotten a little bigger since this. But, you know, Scarlett Johansson has, can hold the screen down by herself. Every single person in that movie, Ruffalo has done plenty of leads before, too. Yeah. So to be able to manage, you know, seven, eight people with Samuel L. Jackson and Phil, you know, to be able yeah. to hold all that <laughs> together, that, that shows a lot of... But everybody gets their, the right amount of screen time. I thought so, too. And what's nice is it's not all battles. It's there's a lot of the the actual character the human character behind the superhero interacting mm-hmm. when Stark and Banner, you know, are, are just talking and you know finally Stark's like finally someone who speaks exactly. English and you can tell that oh I never ever thought before this film about oh that would be really cool to see Bruce Banner and Tony Stark as science and engineers getting together and how would they buddy up they both have kind of rage issues you know one's <laughs> drunk they're both one's controlling alcoholism the other one's controlling you know the hulk and rage they do share a lot in common and man i want to see a spin-off movie with those two so bad now i would love <laughs> they even drive off in the movie in the end in the car yeah. like their love yeah. lovey theme i love it the romance i like the romance that you know colson had with captain america like i really mm-hmm. love that and the i love fanboy yeah you know i like seeing captain america kind of get used to everything and someone commented to him you know i bet you don't this is you know you feel out of place and he's yeah. like on the military heli- heli- jet helicarrier Hel- okay. <laughs> it's a hell of a carrier <laughs> hell of a carrier you know and he's like well this actually you know seems more normal I that like, as we know, all know has been established in the 60s i think we all know that <laughs> yeah that's been around <laughs> for a really long time yes um you know but i liked i like seeing him kind of come to his own and he has that you know little bet with fury you know and after he gets like you know up in the air and he, yeah, there's you know, a lot of personable moments in this film that's, that's not just ass kicking or men in superhero suits with masks and that's, on. It, that's another one of the deleted scenes that I really thought would have helped the movie as a whole. There's a whole, like, five-minute scene of Captain America just, like, in New York looking around just like, this shit's very different. Yeah. This is not what I recall. Yeah, I read some of the uh, uh, Men at a Time uh, mm-hmm. comics. I had some of that, uh, and it was kind of funny because someone even, I think maybe even, like, Tony said that, or somebody comments it to him, you know, oh, well, you know, Captain America, Men at a Time, and I was like, hey... They should show more of that of him in New York. So that's cool yeah. that, you know, that they do have that. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, we're running a little long in this segment. So we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back in about two minutes. We're going to continue to discuss the Avengers. Yay. See you guys in just a bit.
Alright, and we're back. So guys, that's some beautiful piano music that I'm playing back here. You can't see the can what my hands are doing underneath. That's me. So while I, I continue to play this, let's talk a little bit about, uh, we talked a little bit about some of the plot of the Avengers. Now let's get into the actual filmmaking itself. We see a lot of, uh, I'm going to keep this up too. <laughs> we, uh, we've seen a lot of uh, action flicks. We've seen a lot of movies with CG in it. We've seen uh, you know a lot of movies with uh, plenty of action and ass kicking. So what made this one so good? It broke tons of box offices. People that don't even like comics were telling me to go see it, you know, and everybody was recommending this was recommending this movie to me. So what made this one so good, what do you think? I think it was the fact that uh, Joss Whedon, and I can't remember the other co-writer's name, but they managed Professor to- Professor Fatface, I believe. Professor so Fatface, sure. yes. They managed to make a story arc for each character, and each character had a full arc, but they all blended together and worked with each other instead of you know one sort of being the main story and everything else just being Sub. So in, instead of just having like one main character, he really balanced it well so that it, it was the team was the main Because I was going to say, when I went in, I expected it to be Nick Fury's movie with the Avengers standing behind him. I mean, mm -hmm. that's that's what I assumed the plot would be. They were going to make Nick Fury this badass, and the other guys were going to occasionally pop in and out. And it wasn't. It was a story about, you know, Black Widow and, and Green, you know, uh, Hawkeye. Uh, Hawkeye. I almost went Green Arrow on that one. Uh, and Hawkeye. It was a story about. Um, you know, Banner and uh, Stark. It mm -hmm. was a it was a movie about Captain America and Tony Stark. You know, every character had some other play for the most part. I mean, I don't yeah. think there was much Black Widow and Tony Stark, but Captain America and Stark. But they have, already have had the first. They already had the first two movies. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right. Iron Man movie. Right, exactly. And so, but it's nice because they gave everybody a little bit of back and forth. But we've also seen a lot of explosions in movies and stuff like that. So, like the the ending scene with the Leviathan or flying around, mm -hmm. you know, downtown. What what made this one so much more enjoyable? Because it was. I remember watching this. And my girlfriend said that the, I, I looked like this the entire movie. <laughs> I, think I was just smiling like a child. She said, and <laughs> I felt that way. Like every moment of the movie, I was enjoying myself. I think for me, it was just the concept and the reality of actually seeing like you know a good Hulk and a good Captain America and a good Tony Stark finally like you know fighting and like mm -hmm. taking care of everything together as once when they had that whole like you know team up and you know he delegates everything and they're standing in the circle like I got goosebumps and got yeah chills, I did too you know because for me it was like this is people and you know stories I've been reading for so long and I've seen so many bad comic book movies you know done I think for me it was like the first time where they were all actually together and it was believable and it was entertaining well, somebody cared about overdone. the material like yeah. mm -hmm. you know Nolan's Batman may be different than DC's ever kind of represented him for but you know what Nolan cared about that Batman that he was writing and you could tell that he's, he's not just trying to knock off another checklist of movies to take home a paycheck like I felt they've done with some others like even Green Lantern like I felt you know Jeff Johns had a hand in that I and I still felt like they were just like okay we have to have Sinestro we have to have the guy with the big head uh, Hammond we have to have uh, hit all these plot points and then just roll the credits and that's just felt like they were just doing a checklist Yeah. whereas in this one it felt like a real 
almost like a, obviously a fan wrote it, you know, yeah. and Whedon is a fan, that it felt like somebody who cared about seeing these characters fight. And we were talking uh, a little earlier about what Marvel specified had to be in the film. One of the requirements is that Thor must fight Iron Man. And they said that they said very first meeting that has to happen in this film. Now Marvel suggested, why don't you have one of them be under like a magical spell or under a potion? Yeah, get Loki'd basically. Get Loki'd, and we didn't have to challenge him on that. He said no because if that happens, then the very first time either of the characters talk, then the conflict's over. What you don't have then is two separate agendas, which is what you need. Is if you're going to have a legitimate fight between two characters and you're on both their sides, you need each one of them to have a legitimate reason for doing what they're doing, right. and that gives them a legitimate battle before it gets resolved. And so he had to sit there and go, no, let's write a story that brings them at odds with each other as opposed to just having, you know, like with, with Renner, the kind of, you saw that. Oh, he's possessed, so now he's just going to fight the other guys, yeah. you know? And that battle scene between Thor and Iron Man on top of the mountain was one of the best, like, fight scenes I've seen in forever. And um, I really, one of my favorite bits is, of course, when Thor calls down. Because, you know, every time you're wondering, when a guy has a superpower that you know d utterly destroys the other ones like superman's laser vision it's like why doesn't he fight every person by flying into space and shooting with laser beams from space yeah they can't do anything else there's <laughs> not you know and it's like so why doesn't he do that every single time so of course you know with thor calling down the lightning you know you're going why doesn't he just do that every time and i like that they show what happens when he does that to iron man it ups him to 400 percent power so i, I like that it it brings down the superpower of one character you know they wrote that in there where oh that's like um, in the old superman movie i was talking about how you know jerry seinfeld always had this joke or a comedian they were why don't you just shoot superman in the eye it's soft you know if nothing else just poke his eyes out he's superman those are soft so in the brian singer movie one of the only things i liked about the film is they have a guy pull out a gun put it right to his face and shoot a bullet in superman's eye and it bounces off and you're like, now shut up, fan guys, because that's <laughs> it. They said you can't shoot his eye out. Done. And it was nice because you're always thinking, well, why doesn't Thor just call on the lightning on everybody? Well, because uh, when he fights Iron Man, it gives Iron Man more power. Different tactics. Yeah, and that's it, it forced them to keep changing up yeah, their but, game a little bit. But then bit. you see Iron Man headbutt him, and he and Thor just laughs and headbutts him way harder. Yeah, I liked when he hit him with his hammer, and it's a real quick shot. But while Iron Man's going back, he shakes his head, and there's a, a dent just a really tiny one. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the amount of damage that even Thor's hammer can do to the Iron Man suit. It's just a little tiny dent. It's one of my other suit. favorite bits is um, when Hulk goes to pick up Thor's hammer. Because you, I, and, and in the audience we were with, you could hear most of the people go like, what? Like, when the Hulk couldn't pick up his hammer? Because to them, it's like, well, he's the strongest thing on Earth. Why can't he pick up Thor's hammer? But if you know the... You the know, backstory, the backstory yeah. of yeah. Thor, it's a good joke that not even the Hulk can pick up the hammer if he's not worthy. And he just it sits there. So there was, you know, my favorite part was that each part was lovingly and caressingly written by somebody who cared about not making the characters look stupid. Yeah. You know, and Whedon just did a great job with making sure they maintained dignity, you know, all throughout it. And really, I guess for me, that kind of starts back with the Iron Man when Favreau took that on. You know, he kind of admitted he didn't know a whole lot about it, but he went and researched it and delved into the character. And he was like, look, if I'm going to do a superhero movie, I'm going to do one about the people. Yeah. That is also a superhero movie. And I, you kind of set the board, you know, whereas Nolan reset it with a gritty type thing. They reset it as a comic book film but you, that you cared about. Like in the comics, you read about the people, you know. And yeah, because otherwise you wind up with things like the Superman Returns movie. <laughs> yeah, which or is... Or the Fantastic Four movies. Yeah, which are just... Or the Green horrible. Lantern movie. Yeah. And I love Green Lantern. We could keep going, both Or Spider-Man yeah, 3. Or yeah. the Spider-Man oh, movies. Oh, God. <laughs> So don't it's nice. All, to don't say all of them. Don't love them. Spider Man Not 2 all was of good. Them. But then you I have like Spider Man. I like the original Spider Man 2, uh, the Raimi one, anyway, you know? I like the first one. Um. Too. But it, it's nice to finally see some people that are caring enough to not feel like they're just tossing off. It's like how comic books used to be considered, you know, trash, and then they got to, up to the graphic novel form, and now that you can win writing awards for them. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that the comic book film genre is finally coming up to that too, where now you can't just write a movie for fanboys. You have to write a movie that everyone in America will think is awesome, like mm -hmm. the Avengers. Yeah. You have to get the grandmothers in on that. You have to get the fuddy duddy daddies, and because that's a new level now. You know, I mean, you may go see the Batman movie, but Batman isn't as as well as it did. It's not as acceptable, you know, as the Avengers, which was fun, flat out fun all the way through, but still well crafted. Well, you know, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Am I boring you? I know, right? No, I've, I'm just in I, depth intellectual analysis. I, just, I didn't get very much sleep last night. <laughs> What'd you do? I uh, watched a bunch of Dexter with my neighbor. So, oh, which one? Jennifer. 
Oh, I was thinking you were going to say Tony. I'm glad no. to hear it's Jennifer. No, Jennifer. We sat around in our underwear watching uh, Dexter. The <laughs> he, he just snuggled right up to me, you know, and I caressed his beard, and <laughs> it was wonderful, really. <laughs> so, I mean, well, obviously, we give a thumbs up to the film yes. itself, right? And, I mean, if you haven't seen The Avengers, make, make sure yeah, you see What the hell is wrong with you? Because that's, I mean, it's really. really, really worth checking that out. If you haven't seen The Avengers, you better be Amish. Yeah, and even that's even not those even guys a good. Are breaking out now. Yeah, yeah. A, they have their own TV shows about how they're. Well, as long as somebody by. hand cranks the the projector, the projector <laughs> isn't that okay? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of that. In fact, I would like to see Amish Man as a character. Amish you know? Man. So, but uh, now that now that the film is out, and the reason we're reviewing is uh, is Tuesday it came out on Blu-ray and DVD, and. What about the special features? I mean, is it worth purchasing the whole full blown? Mm. Yeah, you guys have to tell me because I still haven't seen the special features. It was nice to have the deleted scenes in there, but you'll get that on any DVD, really. And those were fine, but uh, I I was shocked that there was only the one uh, commentary. You know, yes, it was by Joss Whedon, and that's great, but like I would have liked to have heard from the actors on what was yeah, going on. Yeah, there wasn't any No, and see, that's, that was the thing is my, my biggest complaint about buying the DVD Blu-ray is, okay, you get the DVD and you get the Blu-ray, but they have the same special features on both. There's no bonus disc. And, man, for a film that grossed that much, did that big, broke so many boundaries, and put that many stars in a film, I was disappointed with the... I mean, we tore through the features in, like, less than an hour. Yeah. You know, and there were a couple of featurettes that weren't really that amazingly behind the scene. It was more just like, check out all these people hanging out having fun. Yeah. But <laughs> it, was, it was nice hearing, but, you know, they're all just going to say good things about each other. Even yeah. if they freaking actually hate each other on the DVD, they're like, oh, it's wonderful to work with them and yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. A lot of ego stroke. And I, I, I mean, but I would have liked to have seen more, like we were talking about the crew talking. How, mm-hmm. like, I would have liked to have seen a visual effects featurette. Yeah. And they didn't. They didn't really have that on there. I would have liked to have seen an acting featurette or casting tapes or something. Or a key for grip people. one, right? <laughs> yeah. At least well, a special effects one. I'm surprised with that. Yeah, yeah, and you know, even well, I mean, just some of the practical lighting and some of the sets. And I'll admit, there were a lot of scenes that on some of the featurettes when they're just sh- they're showing footage and passing. How much of it was green screen and blue screen? Where I'm like, I would have just thought that shot was practical. There's nothing special in the background at all. You know, it's not a cityscape or anything. But I was like, oh, I guess that kind of would make more sense to do it, Green. But yeah. I would have liked to have seen a feature on that of the motion capture. The and I was a little disappointed that it, there was. It was just like they. It's almost like they felt like, like most movies feel when you do a checklist. It almost felt like they were like got gag reel, got it, got a featurette on the people all saying they like each other, got, got it. it, got an outtakes, got it, <laughs> you know, got a got deleted scenes, got it, package that bitch. Oh wait, make sure there's a menu where you can select classified features and really that's just the bios for each actor yeah for and, each wow. character yeah for each or for characters now the, well the, i no, there may have been i didn't bother going to the ones for the actors but yeah it was a little disappointing yeah. now they do have a second feature uh, a second watch feature that uh if you have an ipad or something like that when while the movie's going you can actually interact kind of with the film but it really wasn't that spectacular basically it's like little bits of information that pull okay. up that they could have easily Pop-up done a commentary style. yeah exactly pop-up video style but I was sorely disappointed in the fact that it was only one commentary for such a breakthrough film. Yeah. You know, for such a smash hit and, and something that really was a lot of fun. Man, I they're really you can't get those actors I'm, to sit down and talk about I'm really that just film wondering together? if they're I'm wondering if they're going to Lord of the Rings it where it's like, okay, it came out and now the special edition came out and then like a year later, oh the you know, like or at around Christmas time, the deluxe Avengers. Now, see, I would buy that. I know, just wish they would have told me because well. I would still buy both, but I'd like to know because I was honestly really wanting to hear Robert Downey Jr. talk about the movie. Mark yeah. Ruffalo talk about the movie, yeah. you know. Uh, Captain America, I never remember that actor's name. Chris Evans. Chris Evans, yeah. Talk about the I mean, I wanted to hear how those people Chris got Evans. into the character. I want to hear about Robert Downey Jr. getting into Stark's head, you know? And essentially, he's just him anyway. I assume yeah. he just gets up and plays Robert Downey Jr. and just changes the name <laughs> yeah. in his, when it yeah. comes out as Stark. But I want to hear that. And I was sorely disappointed that there wasn't a commentary from down there. And from the crew, I would have loved to have heard a visual effects supervisor, a director of Star Because there were a lot of, of fantastically well-arranged shots, great composition in the film that when you're staging action, it's sometimes very, very difficult for the audience to follow what's going on. You know, I mean, Gladiator mm-hmm. is a great movie. I love Ridley Scott, but there's even sometimes in that movie where I'm like, pull the camera back two feet. <laughs> you don't have to shove it 30 inches from every single thing. And um, the action scenes play so well in this movie that it's cohesive all the way through. There's never a point in that huge battle at the end where I'm going, 
wait, hold on, wait, how did he get there? Or what happened there? Or, you know, how they get people up to the top of buildings or down, or, you know, or, or around the different parts of the city. There's no part where they just cut to something. Yeah. You know, it's clearly well established. And really, I can't have a commentary. I'm telling you, those dudes would have done it for free. You know, <laughs> I'm telling you, the crew would have sat down. With the money that they already made on it, so. Well, no, what I mean is like, you know, usually those people don't get a chance, but that's the yeah. exact type of film where you want the visual effects supervisor. No, the true. Foley guy, the Foley work in that film was great. Most people don't think about the audio when it's going through. The music, Alan Silvestri, who you know did uh, Back to the Future, going for sure. Uh, I believe he did some of the Gremlin score, Forrest Gump. I mean, mm-hmm, he's one of my mm-hmm. favorite composers. Why the hell what, didn't he get a commentary? I mean, I loved the music in The Avengers, and I was shocked when there wasn't a composer track on there, or, you know, a, a, a composer commentary track mm-hmm. on there or but even the director of photography and so i guess i would say i'm a little disappointed with the special features on the disc yeah. i really I'd, expected a lot know. more from that i had i had high hopes and they were not met yeah i mean i wasn't crushed no now the one thing that was kind of nice is they included the small the short film unit 47 yeah that was a neat little thing it didn't make much sense it didn't need to be there it didn't no. do anything for the story but, but basically it's but on the thor dvd they added uh Agent Coulson's uh, agent, what, oh, what was it called? It's uh, called like Phil Stops for Gas or something like that. Yeah, but that's Agent Coulson. He deserves to have his own damn movie <laughs> as it is. I would watch an Agent Coulson movie without a single hesitation. And so, I mean, that was kind of, I mean, I, apparently he's become a huge fan favorite. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, Joss Whedon, oh, the other thing was when he went in, they told him, you know, Thor has to fight Iron Man. They said, by the way, <clears throat> the character Phil, which we created just for this run, we created him just to unite all these so that when people saw him, they would know it's in the same franchise. Since they've, they're all together now. Spoiler alert. Yeah, spoiler alert. Wait a second. Give him a second turn. Yeah. You have to kill Agent Coulson in this movie. And he fought. Joss was like, you understand how much hate I'll <laughs> give for that? He's like the favorite. He's like bigger than any damn superhero now. Yeah. They And they said, no, the reason he was written was the to raisin? get them to the raisins he was written. <laughs> the raisins he was To written. get him to the point, to get everybody to that point, And now they've got to suffer a loss as a team. And you know what? I... From a writing standpoint, it was a really, really good idea. From a fanboy of (laughs) Agent Coulson, I was pissed when Loki gets him. But he goes down fighting, and so I'm I'm a little okay with that. But I thought that was a good decision on Marvel's part. You know, they've created a character solely for the fact of uniting these movies. And then when they're united, they don't need him. And let's get a little bit of drama and emotion Mm -hmm. from that. Yeah. So, but overall, I got to say, obviously, the film, most movies I don't get a, a 10 out of 10 of, but. <clears throat> for the film type it was, for the genre, for an action flick, for an exciting, for a summer blockbuster, for something for the kids and the adults, I gotta say it's it's a 10 out of 10. I mean, normally I reserve that for like Fast, Cheap, and Out of Control, Godfather, Godfather 2, you know, but... Saddles and Paddles 4. <laughs> Saddles and Paddles 4, <laughs> yeah, Gape My Ass 6, <laughs> yeah, the, wow. the classics. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I gotta that we say, all grew up with. Right, but I gotta say for what it was, yeah, you're not gonna find I me mean, when you say you wanna watch... You know, a superhero film with your kids. I gotta say, I'd go to this before the the Nolan Batman's only because the Nolan Batman's I think are better films, and I would give them a you know a, a nine out of ten. But they're not as accessible, and they're not as playful and fun with the material. They're their own thing, and yeah. they're right. great. They're much more serious. Much more serious, and but for what this was, this was one of the best bl- summer blockbusters I've ever seen. Period. Yeah. I mean, when I'm glued to the screen, I w- I've watched it four times now, I think, since we got it. And yeah. every time it's still fun. Yeah. You know, that's hard to beat, you know, and everything about it was good. The features, I think I'll give a, you know, five or six out of ten because it's it's just what was going to be it's on there. Boiler it's very it's, it's boilerplate. Boiler yeah, it's yeah. straight across the board. Nothing you wouldn't expect. Um, I mean, Joss Whedon's delightful giving commentary. One of the things I liked about his <clears throat> There'll be a ridiculous special effect shot where like the Leviathan is flying around the city destroying mm-hmm. stuff, and he'll he'll say, "Now, of course, we try to just do everything as practical as we could. So we we really got that thing up in the air and we flew it around New York." <laughs> and he you know, he talks about how it's a practical shot that they they did, um, but otherwise, you know, definitely get the the movie, but you know, don't feel like you have to spend anything for the extra discs or anything. Blu-ray if you like Blu-ray, but yeah. You know, you're not you're not purchasing anything else. I'm really hoping they do have a, a, a much bigger deluxe edition, special mm-hmm. edition coming out yeah. for that. Well, they do have that Avengers pack movie that came out. It's, uh, oh, it's a, right. a box set with the six movies and the like four special DVD or special features DVDs. Right. And, and if you want to watch the short film Unit 47, it's basically about one of the weapons after the Battle of New York. 
some guy finds and repairs it, and he and his girl go on a um, bank heist a bank spree, heist spree oh, wow. and they get brought down by Shield. Yeah, and uh, Shield ends up making them agents because obviously they got this weapon that no one else on Earth can get to work working. So they put that guy in R and D, and the girl was you know enough to take out a few agents or almost so. They make her an agent, and yep. uh, that's it. It's like a... She gets the short end of the stick on that one. I mean, she gets made a secretary. <laughs> yeah. But she gets that instead of going to prison for yeah, 20 it, years. Well, yeah, it, <laughs> so it beats federal prison. So, so But it was... Yeah. The other thing, it was completely... It does, whereas Coulson, I want to watch more stuff with that guy. This was two people who weren't in the movie with two agents who weren't in the movie yeah. with a prop that was in a couple of shots, and... But anyway. Yeah, anyway, so... so but yeah, the special features maybe five or six out of ten. But the film itself, obviously, ten out of ten. So if you haven't seen it, you know, I'll tell you, buy this one. Don't pirate it because really, <laughs> I want Whedon to make money. You know, I, what I want is I want the studios to see this is profitable. Mm-hmm. So of all the other crap that I'll tell you to pirate or go and get for free, <laughs> this one spend the money on this one. You know? Yeah. All right, well, we're going to take a, a quick little break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about the Vinyl Thought Show from a couple of weeks ago. We finally were able to get back on the air and talk about it. And uh, Taff's going to tell us a little bit about what she's doing the next couple of weeks. And then we'll talk a little bit about the beer show coming up on Friday. Oh, Jesus. Really so, again. yeah, I know. Pretty close. So we'll be back in just a few minutes, guys. See you soon.
From Joss Whedon, God of the Nerds, comes the movie blockbuster that finally unites the world's greatest superheroes that Marvel still has the rights to. The Avengers, the ultimate two-hour geek fantasy that blinds all nerds from admitting any legitimate criticism and put all of DC Comics on suicide watch. A villain who inexplicably returns from the dead will vow vengeance on the planet where his demigod brother's sort of girlfriend lives, forcing this Bluetooth-obsessed government agency to assemble the heroes from Marvel's greatest franchises, except Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, and X-Men. Suit up with Iron Man, everyone's favorite secondary Marvel character who must redeem himself from the god-awful Iron Man 2. Thor, who sort of pulled off his own movie, but whose appearance here completely negates its ending. Captain America, no one's favorite character, who just kinda has to be there. And the Incredible Hulk, who for the sake of the plot can now suddenly control his rage. I'm always angry without any explanation. Which doesn't matter, cause that shot was awesome. Witness the excitement. I need you to get to that engine control panel. Of Iron Man repairing a spaceship for 20 minutes. 
the thrill of generic aliens on flying jet skis. The confusing energy source of the Tesseract. The Tesseract can't fight. You can't protect against yourself. And it's completely unjustified failsafe. The explosion that instantly kills every alien, conveniently tying up all loose ends. The Bromance. the character in the middle of the credits who every nerd in the audience pretended to know. A movie so fulfilling you won't remember that the first 45 minutes are actually kind of boring. A villain so determined you need the cube to bring me home but I've sent it off I know not where. You'll wonder why he's uniting the only people who can stop him in hopes of getting them to dislike each other. Not a great plan. Battle is so action packed. It's dark. You got a lot of spray stuff in your tail. You won't even ask yourself how are they even all talking to each other without earpieces? I can close it. Can anybody copy? Do it! No, wait. Stark, these things are still coming. Stark, Boar, Pink Eye, Iron Man Pooping, Not Edward Norton, The Human Torch. Leather, Boobs, Mace Windu, and Gay Bane. Marvels, the Avengers. If this doesn't make your inner eight-year-old self squeal in delight, you're likely dead inside. Or a girl. If you like honest trailers, then please check out our brand new weekly series, The Screen Junkie Show. Seriously, don't be a jerk. We worked real hard on this new show. So check it out and leave a comment. And as always, leave a comment with the movie you'd like to see get the honest treatment next. Cats with boobies. Opa Gangnam Style. All right, well, that's not too bad. I got to admit that they did sum up a lot of it. Yeah, yeah. Chris yeah, is. Although, in the commentary, Whedon did point out at the, at the end, he's like, I guess I should probably not say this, but I'm going to. But how uh, the Queen Bee scenario where you kill the head and they all fall over, he's like, yeah, that wasn't great, but we kind of just had to wrap the movie up at that point. Otherwise, so it'd be 17 hours of just kind of clean up fighting. Yeah, he's like, otherwise, you got a three hour movie for the next 17 hours of them killing every single person individually. He's like, nobody wanted to sit through that. But yeah, that was, that was pretty good. Well, I'll tell you what, we had Vinyl Thoughts uh, a couple of weeks ago, and Taff and I were at that. We broadcast live from that. And Jedi, if you could throw up uh, some of those images there from the show, we're going to just quickly go through. I mean, obviously, we had a blast. I it did. was a really so, good time. so much fun. Um, and they, oh no, that's the tab. That's the, uh, what is that? Uh, that's Dr. Sketchies. That's Dr. Sketchies, yeah, sorry. It's the uh, VT3 stuff, I believe, is what it is. Anyway, uh, there we go. Of course, that's that's the show we were at. Cody Phillips and Shelby Miller were just fantastic, great hosts, and we had a blast. There's us. Look with Jimmy. With my mouth open. <laughs> and you kept saying the word Spain over and over Hi, again. Hi, Spain. Hi, Spain. That's because you said There's we were you talking and to Spain. So, so you can see in the background, of course, how packed and busy it was. It was It was. Phenomenal. The beer was gone way earlier this time. Last time, I don't think the beer... Even no, it, it didn't. It went to the whole show. Now, that was one of my favorites, the Raphael in the top right. Okay. I didn't get a chance to purchase it because I didn't have enough money to have the chance to purchase it. I really but. like the Pinocchio. I think the, uh, pretty much when I walked in there, like, I saw, like, every cartoon character or serial character from my childhood, like, you know, customized into a toy. <laughs> We're having some off-screen drama here <laughs> with uh, some of the interns. <laughs> You're so good if you want. That's a good intern. It's she's really she's great. She's getting a degree on bioscience. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I mean, we just we had a blast. So they're gonna be doing it in a couple of more months. We're gonna obviously try to be out there again. And uh, guess what? When I checked the statistics later to see who had watched the show from what countries around the world, Australia, France. Uh, Want to guess what other country had somebody watching? Spain. Spain had one person watching. <laughs> <laughs> you told so me you that Spain was watching. You weren't wrong, yeah. So that's I kept great. saying hi, Spain. So, of course, that was just tons of fun. I want to say thank you to uh, Cody and Shelby for having us out. Make sure you go to the Vinyl Arts Thought Show. Oh, no, I'm sorry, it's uh, Vinyl, Vinyl Thoughts Art Vinyl Show. Thoughts Art Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So check out the website. And, uh, of course, you can like them on Facebook as well. Just look up Vinyl Thoughts and just great, great, great. But uh, coming up very soon next weekend, you have Dr. Sketchy. So what is Dr. Sketchy's staff? Um, Dr. Sketchy's is where they have a, you know, a local artists that come in and they pay like t uh, $10 to draw you for a few hours. Um, they have a lot of uh, models and burlesque dancers that come out there and you know strip down to their skivvies. I think last 
Uh, However, if you're in the audience, they don't appreciate that. I sat in my hour, <laughs> my underwear for half an hour oh, last time, and they just gave me. Death. Yeah, by the way, this uh, <laughs> got a thing for that picture. The Myra Duff. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you know, I'll be going down there. This was actually Dr. Sketchy's last year, and uh, this year I'll be going down there again. That was Oklahoma. Uh, sorry, we're just oh, popping up. I'm getting die. distracted <laughs> by myself. <laughs> and not just because it's me, just because I'm like, that's a badass costume. <laughs> yes. Um, so, yeah, I'll be going down there uh, from 4 to 7, uh, Dr. Sketchy's Austin, and I will have uh, my Velma out there, but I'll be doing a zombie Velma version since it's, you know, October, and then I'll Very be cool. doing the egg. Uh, Queen from Candyland, and then I'll have uh, Tex Avery's Red, and uh, I hear right. That, which for the people that don't know, that's when the wolf eyes bug out and yeah. the tongue drops to the floor. The Little Red Riding Hood, that's little red Avery's Riding Red. Hood. Yeah. And uh, and apparently they're actually uh, gonna bring a guy out in a suit. Hold on, hold on. I like this one now. That I put these two together. This is you posing with Scooby. Yeah. And then the the next one's uh, an artwork that comes with that. Um, yeah. Of the the artwork somebody did. Yeah, with that was a twenty minute that. pose. So that's kind of what it's like. Mm. So a bunch of artists sit around and sketch you holding a pose. And then this pose. particular one, you see the mummy there. They actually like give you know themes. Okay, in this particular pose, you have to draw like a monster in there with her. You know, so they give them different you know oh, ideas cool. to take the pose. You know, because uh, Terry Parr actually did one of me at the one I did in Dallas, and it's like me sitting he sucks. sitting down, and um, <laughs> he actually drew me with Terry. ET. You know, like my fingers out, so he has like ET pointing. Oh. You know, so. It's, it's, <laughs> I think it's really good for the artists. They go in there and they, you know, they have a, a live model who gets to pose for them for a few hours. And I do it in costume. And I try to bring, you know, with Velma, I have like, you know, my spyglass and I'll like pose in my spyglass for ten minutes, you know. And so it's fun. No, it's a lot of fun. And uh, next week we have uh, Terry's uh, wife, Halo. Fiance, but yes. Fiance. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward into the future. But if you want to naysay, that's <laughs> that's fine. I'm trying to look out for. No, of course, Terry Parr, one of the best artist in Dallas and his wife Halo Seraphim who's done work for the, for the show as well did the banana logo and she's just great and uh, we're going to try to get on both of them but from my understanding you know, Terry's kind of shy mm-hmm. so Halo does all the talking yeah. I can only imagine what that household's like <laughs> 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 so uh, but they're, they're going to be a lot of fun and of course if you're down in it's Austin right yeah What's the website for the sketchy so that our fans down in Austin can go check you out? Um, it's pretty much just, uh, you can go to drsketchies.com, and from there you can go to locations and just click on the Austin location. Yeah. Now, is doctor spelled out, or is it the DR? DR. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you can excited. also Google it, I assume. Yeah, Dr. Sketchy's Austin, and there's also uh, you know, a Facebook page for that as well, and if uh, you are on my Facebook page or Twitter, like I have posts, you know, going out about it, reminding and stuff. So I'm just making a day trip down there. Oh, well, sorry. Can you take some pictures and bring them back with you for the show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm hoping that I'll get some good ones because uh, I'm excited. I just have fun when I go down there because yeah. I like Pop all the women Dallas costumes. people. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, that's on her priority list, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> I go for the free beer. <laughs> well, one of these days, you know what? You talk to Dr. Sketchy. Maybe one of these times we can do a, uh, a broadcast from the event. Dude, until totally Bring in that way we can demonstrate some of the artists too on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think they would talk, do that. D- talk to the doctor and see what he says. I will. I'll call 911. <laughs> I've cut my arms wide open just so I can give me a doctor. Talk to you. That just gives me a representative. So that's not a good joke. <laughs> We weren't going to pick it apart. Yeah. You're not You're not dumb. I was going to leave it, it alone, apart. but if you want to go, it's fine. I did. I went Like there. a pack of wolves going on the, the, the lame one right at the end. Yeah. There. Well, I want to say thanks for watching the show this week, of course. Um, make sure you go out and check out The Avengers oh, out on DVD and Blu-ray. Oh, one more tune, thing. Tune in next Friday for uh, Bottoms Up Dallas. Oh, that's right. Let's talk a little bit more. Jedi, can we get that played like up on the screen? Five seconds. Yeah, no, you're right. Thank you very much about that. Uh, the, the beer show, Bottoms Up Dallas, is going to be this Friday. It's always the first Friday of every month. And uh, this month we're going to be reviewing Russian IPAs. Are we? Russian IPAs. Oh, That's he what changed Cullen. it. I thought it was Bavarian uh, strong ales or something like that. Uh, he said Russian IPAs. All right. Hey, now the best it, part it's is up to Cullen, hey, the so. best part is yeah he's the beer expert. So we leave that up to him. Nice. But um, if you check out Bottoms Up Dallas, it's there on your screen right now. Go over there. It'll list the uh, the the style and the four beers that we're going to review. The coolest part is they're available at the beer store where we do the show from. So if you want to come in and grab World a bottle company. or two, World Beer Company on Lower Greenville, the bottle shop, cool. 2116 up there on the screen for you. Um, yeah, you can get the beer beforehand, sit at home and watch the review with us and, and you know, see, what, see if we're right or if we're wrong. Here's a hint. You're wrong. We're right. We've got the experts. <laughs> uh, if you want to come out to the show, we always have samples and games and trivia. So it's a lot of fun. We've done three of them now so far and we have a blast every time. Yep. And for the people that don't really like this show or me as a host, I don't host the show. So <laughs> I'm behind the camera. and You Jedi, get a lot more of me. Yeah, Jedi and I do the magic behind the station, and 
Jay is the one that ruins this show by being in front of it. All by myself. So, and of course, Jimmy Ryan, if you watch uh, the Debellum Electric show on, on uh, EDM. EDM on uh, Tuesday nights, uh, he's one of the hosts, too. So, really, come out uh, this next Friday, October 5th, uh, to the World Bottle Company's, I'm mean, sorry, the World Whoa. Beer Company's Bottle Shop on Lower Greenville. And we just have a blast, 10 to midnight. But uh, we want to say thanks for watching the show. Make sure you check out Avengers. came out this last Tuesday. Pick it up on Blu-ray or DVD. Ooh. And, you know, enjoy the special features best you can. But really enjoy the film. And uh, make sure this Saturday. Is it Saturday? For Sunday. This? It's on Sunday. This Sunday. Oh, so perfect. You make it to the beer show Friday night. Saturday to sober up. Sunday, drive to Austin and check out Taft down at Dr. Sketchy's. Exactly, exactly. So, um, well, that's it. You've watched another wonderfully long episode of the Dell OL Show. Next week, we're going to have on uh, Halo Seraphim and uh, possibly Terry Parr. We're going to be reviewing uh, whatever was on the calendar for next week. We, yeah, we do have a thing to review. I believe it was Christopher, no- the Nolan Batman universe. That's what uh, it is. Oh, okay. So we're going to be reviewing all three of the Batman films uh, by Christopher Nolan. Bummer. And uh, I'll admit, I don't under... Because I watched Memento the other day, and I didn't understand that that was supposed to be like Bruce Wayne after all of them losing his memory or what. But anyway, Jay's going to explain to me how that... It ties in really nice. Yeah, how Very that ties neatly. in, because I'm confused, quite honestly. Well, he gets Inception. Well, and, when, and, and we watched The Prestige, and I guess I didn't understand why Batman went into magic for a bit. But that's... And, and why he was competing with Wolverine. Yeah, was I was so... Weird. And then they had the Black Widow who was in there doing her thing. Yeah. yeah. yeah and and I... Alfred was on Wolverine's side. Yeah, I was thoroughly... That was the most confusing out of the Batman movies, for, yeah. by far, was The Prestige. He didn't step up for Batman towards the end, at the end of it. Yeah. He was yeah. just for goodness all around, regardless of the side. <laughs> So we're going to review uh, the Nolan's Batman next week. We're going to have on uh, Halo, Seraph, and, of course, everything we talked about this weekend, Friday and Saturday nights. Uh, for more information, go to DelOLShow.com, D-E-L-O-L-Show.com. Check out BottomsUpDallas.com. Make sure, of course, you check out other shows on the station, DeepLMOnAir.com, where your wonderful MC, Jedi, will walk you through what's going on for the week. Jedi, anything special coming up this weekend on any shows? Uh... No. I like that. I like it when, <laughs> I like it when my, the, our other show is the important one for the week. So yep. make sure you tune in for that. So, uh, well, we'll see you guys next week, and thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Yes.